Hey guys, Nighty here. I wanted to go over something that's going to pretty much be an argument for the rest of time when it comes to sports. How important stats are in the grand scheme of things. Now, you see it a lot. People are going to rag on the player that has the worst stats, who has the lowest KD. And as a professional player, somebody that's com competed a long time, APG is one of those people that has always had stats that were questionable because he was the most aggressive player you, you've possibly ever seen. Like He just would run in with his BR, win the fights, be the entry fragger, so to speak. Uh, that's a counter-strike term, but it definitely applies in any first-person shooter. Somebody that's going to lead the charge first, try to get damage down. Uh, if he's successful, he gets multiple players weak and opens up the map for his team to come in and get the cleanups. If he gets a trade, great. But ultimately, he just wants to open up the map. And that's where he's always kind of sat with a, a lot of other players. You know, this this goes a, across the board for top pros. But we're just going to talk about APG because he just won the last event. And a lot of the games, he had the worst stats. And you'll see that a lot with winning teams is that one player does have the worst stats. It It's just going to happen. And uh, sometimes it's lucid, sometimes it's trivi, sometimes it's formal. Uh, it's not always APG, but he was getting a lot of shit for it before the event um, and even after the event. You know, players think that they can just upgrade from APG, and that's not the case. Uh, who are you going to upgrade him with? Snakebite? Uh, sure, but Snakebite's not going to leave face. Let's be realistic. You know, what are the moves? Where can they upgrade from APG? And there's not any players that I can really see that could fill that void. You know, there's not players that have won events and won world championships who could be in his spot and be able to compete against the likes of FaZe and SSG and win a tournament from them. Those are, those are some really good rosters. Competitive Halo has not been at this level ever in the history of Halo Esports. It just, it's just insane to think that any old player can come from the muck and start competing on the main stage for this amount of money, $250,000 pool, million dollar pool, and be able to compete. It does not make sense. So this is what this video is for. It's to ultimately celebrate the gameplay and out of game decisions that are required to win a tournament. I want to dedicate a video to purely that. What it takes in your practice, what it takes building a team like this, a championship-level team. Optic have already won a world championship. They just won the last tournament. You see here, they, they performed when it mattered. Trippy, Lucid, Formal all had incredible tournaments, but no one is talking about APG. And it's just ridiculous. So here we go. Halo is a game of inches and seconds. Every single thing matters. But not just in the game. Also out of game. Building your relationships with your teammates. It's, it's a job. You have to show up every day. You got to be on time. You have to build rapport. You have to build trust. You have to build respect. And even love. I once spoke with a world champion, Nick Merckx. He said, if you don't love your teammates, you're not going to win the world championship. If you don't have love for your teammates and you can trust all three of them, even the coach, all four, all four of those people, you need to be able to trust so much. Every time that they communicate, you've got to know that it's the truth and that you need to make that play and follow them because all of them are leaders. So if you don't have those elements, forget about it. And <laughs> that's all out-of-game stuff. That's all hanging out with them, talking with them, um, spending spending time working on each other's game, You know, criticizing, feedback, calling each other out, holding each other accountable. These are so – there's so much to it. <laughs> you can't just look at the numbers. It's, it's ridiculous. Just looking at the numbers is insane. Like, forget about the stats. It's about your lats. Can you lift that trophy? 
Think about lifting that trophy. That's more important than any number possible. You're not going to think about that 60 years from now and be like, oh, man, I wish my stats were better. Fuck that. It's all about this right here, man. The win. That win. Nothing feels better. That's what it's all about. So let's let's go a little bit deeper into it. The, the habits you have to build over time, o- over the span of a 20-year career. You know, think about it. None of that shows in the stats. Nothing will show in the stats that is of essence. Your discipline level. How much individual practice are you putting in? What is the time that you're putting in? None of that will show. Also, how close was this competition? We've already talked about it, but insanely close. Any of these teams could win on any given day. It's it, Even Sentinels went to the grand finals the last event. Sentinels are, are pushing it, pushing the top teams. All of these teams are just incredible. That also does not show in the stats. That's something to think about. When APG plays against lesser teams, what are his stats like? They're probably astronomical. He's probably whooping their ass. We've already talked about who would fill APG's shoes. There's not that many. <laughs> there's, there's very few people that are available. That's the key word, available. And this goes to, you know, you say this about anybody when you're talking about stats. What are all these elements? How are they all coming together? Should APG be criticized by his fans? Absolutely. You have every right to get, give feedback and to criticize and, you know, understand the movements and, you know, what are the politics behind it. But guess what? Nobody knows more about a player and his value than his teammates. His teammates at the end of the day are making that decision and, and they should. So let's go into it. I want to talk a little bit about some examples that I've, I've taken away and we've got some good ones here that I grabbed from the grand finals. They are, Games that he won, but didn't have very good stats. So I would think that would be a a perfect example to support my claim. And I know that there's plenty of times where it's like, oh, well, look at this, look at that. That's fine. Y'all can support your argument all you want, but this is the best support for me uh, as far as APG is concerned and the most relevant. So let's take a look. He just scored a flag here. And ran it all the way back. Was able to grab rockets. Used both effectively. Um, was just securing the middle of the map. Is going to secure the heat wave. He's listening to call outs right now. Just communication, you know. Probably listening to some direction. Some some death cams. Listening that the overshield player is pushed into his base. Uses his last rocket. And now he's going to try to use as much of the heat wave as possible. But he gets the kill and is able to clear out his base. Let's go back to that. I want to just go a little bit more in-depth. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Okay, so caps the flag. And is immediately like... Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Okay, so watch this. Caps the flag. And then is immediately looking towards his teammate. He has the awareness to decide where he needs to go and help his teammate. He's hearing his teammate give the call out. He needs help. He he might have looked over to his teammate's screen for a second. Watched where he needed to get help from. And all of that is instant. He was just on top of it to put shots down and help his teammate. Now, he put maybe like one or two shots there. But... Just his presence standing at cuts made that player back off and decide that was a losing battle and he didn't need to go for that trade because he possibly would have just died from APG anyway. So it's 
smart that that player needed to back down. So, so think about that. None of that was on the st- on the stat sheet. Like, yeah, it's a flag cap, but it's like his decision to help his teammate here and keep him alive. None of that's on the stats. Like, Lucid knows what happened. His teammate knows. Oh, APG was on it. Like, he didn't just run plat and then not even pay attention. Like, he's he's effective at all times during a game. The priority was the flag cap. He got the flag cap. Now the priority is keeping Lucid alive and holding down sword. So, look at that. Shots put down. Keeps Lucid alive. Ultimately, Lucid dies to Eco. But ABG comes in here and does what is necessary. Goes for the next priority, which is Rockets. And Heat Wave, especially. Both of these are very important to have. Now, Formal's running the flag. So now it's APG's responsibility to protect the flag. And who is the most dangerous towards the flag carrier? It's going to be bound with the OS in his base. So he immediately goes for that. Now, these none of those decisions are on the stat screen. Think about that. His good decision making, which every single decision he's made so far has been perfect, none of it is on the stat screen. Yeah, he's gotten some kills out of it and stuff, but it's like those don't really add up to have an unbelievable game, you know? Um, it's just it's just unreal to think the stats really mean much when it comes to the win when you're looking at these decisions that he's making being the true factor. Hitting the crucial headshot right there. Stellar could have gotten those rockets and blown APG up, and then that would have changed this entire scene. Formal would have not been able to get this flag cap. I mean, uh, pull and and gotten far with it and, it, and it would have taken pressure off of Space Station. It would have changed everything. Bound could have made a play here. Bound could have got a, a flag cap, and, and they would have been tied. And who knows where that would have gone, you know? There's a lot of small elements that are involved when you're talking about competitive Halo, and especially at this level. All right, I think we've talked enough about this example. We can move on. All right, so the next one. This one is probably one of my favorites. Um, they're making a play for Overshield here. Uh, Lucid just goes on an absolute tear. They were having an incredible tournament. Rockets, uh, once again, in the hands of APG. And we've seen our fair share of bad Rockets from all top players. But that was a good one. It did the damage. He was going to get the cleanup. Lucid got the kill instead. He fired a pre-Rocket to, to try to bait out that player and to save his teammate's life. Then he goes in the flank, gets two players extremely weak, gets another, does not... Get off of that player. He's not going to let Penguin get an angle at all on his flag guy. And it's like, yeah, there was a lot of kills there and a lot of a lot of stats. But ultimately, it was his decision making to push up on shotgun. Here, let's fast forward a little bit. So right here, he knows Lucid's set up with Snipe. He gets a Blaine. That's the opener. That opens things up for ABG to make a move. He makes the move. Lucid hits another. And and he immediately is on the push. And he's going to stay here to protect his flag guy. Make sure to block these spawns. Get these kills. And look at this. He's not waiting for his shield to come back. He could have died easily if there was a player pushing cuts. But it was a selfless play because he knew what he had to do. And he gets the angle. And then he goes back to block those spawns. So let's look at that one more time. This was all decision based. Like, yeah, he he used two rockets and didn't get kills. That's that's fair to say. Like, oh wow, you know, he's not good with rockets. Not not necessarily. You don't always have to get kills to win the game, and that's what this video is all about. Is like inches and seconds. He had to get it done. He had to get the job done, and he got the job done. Let's see it one more time. He does not get a kill off of either one of these rockets, but firing that second rocket secured that there was no player going to be there to put any damage on his flag guy. He was baiting him very efficiently. 
and then he was able to get the kill. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. I guess Eco was out of ammo. And then, you know, just effectively team shot the team down. These are the situations that top players put themselves in, regardless if they get kills or not. And that ultimately is what's going to win you tournaments and championships. All right. Oh, I did it again. Okay. Last one. So this one's pretty big. Uh, this one secured them a lot of time. Right before this, he made a huge flank, but it didn't work out. But it still ultimately opened up the map for his team to secure the, the hill before this. And it, and it was just another example of no stats, but his team being able to capitalize and win the game. But here we go. He gets OS off of that spawn from dying, actually. He gets put into a good position because he died from the last push. He spawned right by the OS popping up. So there's something to say about that as well, is that you're actually getting a lot of information with your death screen when you die. <laughs> you're you're having time to, uh, to, to communicate a little bit more and to direct traffic. And then also you might get more favorable spawns the more times you die. <laughs> And that's a big thing about Halo. If you've competed enough, you realize that there's a lot of times where spawns can change the outcome of a game. If a player on the other team's not checking the spawns properly, and, and they're not ready for the OS, and they're not blocking spawns, and they're just not on top of it, then you're going to get some favorable spawns off of, off of some deaths. And it's like, that's not on the stat screen. Or, I mean, that's not on the board. That death translating into all of all of that, getting this OS and then getting all of this time and winning the game off of... Because, I mean, this comes down to 3-3. Three, three, three. Like, it comes down to the very last hill. Uh, Space Station make a miraculous comeback. So here you go. Look at all this time off of that OS. He was able to just bulldoze through, help his teammates out, be there for this trade get all of this time and then lucid is able to secure the hill oh man i'm lost in the sauce on this thing okay so one more time decision making right he decides to get in the hill because formal's already got eco down there's three down on space station he just needs to look for stellar and get time here. There's no reason to really push up on their spawns, block spawns, or get pressure on them just yet. But they do immediately come off spawn and start putting pressure down mid, and then going low as well. So they're immediately going in, and APG realizes that. So he's like, wait a minute. I shouldn't just stay in the hill here. I need to push out. So he does. He leaves the hill for a second, push, puts pressure on, makes sure that he fell. And then comes right back in to get time. Is watching the flank. Bound wasn't ready for it. He would have been if, if ABG had stayed in Hill. So it's like gaining that bit of space and pushing those players out and helping his teammates really was crucial. And, and he does the exact same thing there as well. Making sure to prioritize damage and getting the kills before getting the time. Which is very, very necessary. And those are the decisions right there that are top-level plays. That's perfect Halo. He's doing exactly what he needs to do. And is any of that really translated into the stats? Is, is he building a huge KD ratio off of that? Fuck no. Who gives a shit? You want to lift that trophy at the end of the day. And, and, and these stats are just numbers on a board. They're going to tell you certain things. They're going to tell you that you're getting a lot of cleanups. Maybe you're winning all of those individual battles on your own and whatnot, you know, but from a lower level perspective, I understand. I understand what people think, that the stats are really important. But there's so much to tell around these stats. There's such a huge story to be made. You need to watch gameplay. If you're not watching gameplay, then you can't talk about a lot of players and where they need to go. I'll tell you this right now. I watched a lot of this event, almost all of it. I was covering it. I was at the event. And 
it you just don't see a lot of the non all stars. You know, you want to see the players that are grabbing snipe and hitting the crazy shots. You don't necessarily always always want to be on the rocket player. But th this was a, a rare opportunity here. Shout out to our observer, L Town, knowing where to put it. Putting it on the forward pressing player. Because that's where a lot of the action is going to be. And APG is extremely aggressive. But <laughs> he does die a lot. So you're not ever going to get to see a whole bunch of gameplay from him in a tournament. And that's just the way it is. So I recommend before speaking your piece about how people should be dropped and whatnot, to go into their stream and look look at their practice. See how they're practicing throughout their time with their team and see if they're really dropping the ball, if they're not putting good time in, if they're not being intentional with their practice, if they're, how they're communicating with their teammates, how they're gelling. Because I saw way too much hate towards APG, and I, and I see this almost all the time. We saw it with Lethal for a while before uh, I believe they won Kansas City last year. And I saw it before he got second place with Sentinels, you know, that Lethal was out of it. And I think a lot of it had to do with his internet connection. So you you got to go and look at the streams. you got to go look at the practice because that's going to tell you a bigger bigger picture. Like how are the communications, what are the comms like during, during his scrims? And are they flowing? Because all of that is very, very necessary to understanding where players need to go. I would say 99% of of what you need to see about a player, you're not going to see when you're watching an HCS tournament. And that's just the facts. I've covered a lot of Halo tournaments. I've watched a lot of sports. And there's just... And I've competed. <laughs> so it's like... I understand this on a very intimate level. And I'm telling you right now, the stats are going to lead you astray. But, uh, you know, I'm down to make this a series. Fuck it. I'm going to go throughout the history of Halo and just, and just bring up a lot of, like, scrims and a lot of examples of where the stats do not matter. Where they just don't tell a tale. I wish I could watch the full game of, of Eco getting 50 kills in game six because that was insane. Uh, he was doing a million more things than just getting the cleanups. He was going absolutely bonkers. Just huge, huge, huge. And same with Lucid. I'm watching a lot of his gameplay. We, we just can't watch a full gameplay with comms because that's what it's required to really see the big picture, the full picture. So just remember that going forward that you need... To to consider that it's really about the teammates. The teammates are going to see everything. They're going to be aware. If you're a good pro, if you're a good Halo player at the top, a world champion, you're going to know everything about your teammates, and, and you're going to be on top of this shit. You're going to know how much time they're spending and how much, what their practice is like and how they should perform under pressure and what's going on in those big moments where they, where they need them to perform. Because it's very hard to catch all of that in an HCS tournament. It's, trust me, very difficult. Um, I've gameplay directed for 10 years now, and it's insane to grab everything. Like, it, it just isn't going to happen. So, going through Twitch, going through VODs is essential. Or, or just playing these players, you know, going into HCS or uh, um, the arena on Halo Infinite and playing against them, understanding, like, what they're really doing. How are they holding down sides of the map without getting any kills and grabbing the, the weapons at the right time and timing everything and just being complete commanders of the map? Because that's really what it comes down to is commanding your gameplay on a level that no one else can. And the stats aren't going to show that. Period. All right, I think that's it. <laughs> the end of my rant. That's my uh, my my little review on stats. I'm sure that I'll be talking about it forever because there's always there's always new players to the game and teachable moments. So yeah, I will see y'all next time.